Let's talk about labor arbitrage. If you live in a first world country and your job is something that can be executed remotely, this is one video you do not want to skip. And if you live in a third world country, this video could be good news. Let's begin. Labor arbitrage, put simply, involves leveraging the strength of strong currencies to get cheap labor from countries with a currency that is not as strong. Let's look at some examples. Orion Taraban is a YouTuber. From Social Blade, it appears that he makes anywhere from $1,000 to $27,000 a month. He's standing at over 500,000 subscribers. But when you look at the team behind his videos, he has only two people working on his videos. One thumbnail designer and one person who turns his video into shots. Two of them are from Nigeria and Asia. What that means is the cost of running his YouTube channel is incredibly low. I would imagine that a thumbnail designer in the US will probably charge anywhere from $50 to $500 for a thumbnail. But when you are buying that thumbnail from someone in Nigeria or someone in Asia, you could easily get that thumbnail for $5 or $1. Now $5 in Nigeria is about 7,000 Naira. That is a chunk of change for a thumbnail. What this means is that there is an incentive for YouTubers or any business owner in general to buy labor from countries with currencies that are not as strong as, say, the US dollar. The direct implication of this, though, is that thumbnail designers in the US or video editors in the US or any other kind of job that can be done remotely are constantly losing their jobs to people in third world countries. Let's look at another example. Steven Carvota, as I said in a previous video, is becoming one of my favorite YouTubers. His business model, he develops apps that solve problems and then he pushes those apps into the market and makes a profit. He hires his developers from Upwork and as he said in his previous videos, he loves hiring people from Eastern Europe, countries like Ukraine. And if not that, he hires people from Asia, India or Pakistan. So I personally have gone to Upwork in an attempt to hire a developer and you can easily build an app anywhere from five to $10,000. But if you're going to hire a developer in the US, that same scope of work would probably cost you anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000. The developers in these third world countries have just as good an expertise as the developers in the West, and these guys are willing to work 12 hours a day non-stop. They do not require vacation pay, they do not require sick leave, and they don't require benefits. So why would somebody hire a developer in the US when he can get that same job done for twice the speed and half the price? Recently, I went for dinner with a friend of mine who is a graphic designer. And one of his complaints was that while they were trying to do graphic design job for anywhere for $50 to $100, he was constantly seeing people online that were willing to do the same job for $1. And of course, you would imagine these guys that are offering to do this job for cheap are not based in Canada. So he's in a difficult position. He loves graphic design, but now he's constantly competing with people who are in a different part of the world. So his clients here in Canada are pretty much people who do not know that they can get graphic design services for much cheaper online. Now, in case you are thinking this is happening on a small scale, that is far from the case. This is happening on a very large scale. Large corporations and big companies are all hiring remotely from third world countries. Many customer service roles for companies in the US and Canada are actually performed by individuals who live in third world countries or at least countries with currencies that are not as strong as the US dollar. Now it's a common theme on YouTube that big YouTubers have their video editors, thumbnail designers, and even the people who upload and manage their YouTube channels all from third world countries. This means that if this is your expertise here in the West, you are going to have a very difficult time finding jobs. Now what does this mean for you? Now having said all this, what should you do if you live in the West? Well, my recommendation is get a job, however unglamorous the job may be, have some savings and use that savings to build a business. Focus on businesses where you can hire talent from abroad. So say you're able to save $500 a month, that $500 a month can buy you services from third world countries that you couldn't buy with say $20,000 a month. So focus on that. If you live in a third world country, my recommendation would be instead of trying to build a business, focus on being a freelancer. Everybody in the world right now is hiring and they're looking specifically for people who live in countries with currencies that are not as strong. So from building some money from your freelance services, you can eventually turn that into a business and then build real wealth from there. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.